Good afternoon, Lace Jump, and I'm John. This is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands. Well, last time, we kicked off our adventure by exploring Megaton, probably Fallout 3's most densely populated town. And I'd say we did pretty well out of it. We've got ourselves a free house, a robot, and a really damn snazzy hat. But today, we're going to be doing pretty much precisely the opposite, because uh, can't help but notice that, um, there's a lot of map as needs exploring, so uh, okay, Moira wants me to head all the way up here to Minefield, uh, let's flip and do it. But first, let's talk all about the things that John didn't get wrong, okay, it was the plugin's fault, not mine. Because yes, last week I attempted to build a rocket launcher, but unfortunately it broke. So badly, in fact, New Vegas crashed out of shame. But don't worry, thanks to the lead dev of Tale of Two Wastelands, who very kindly emailed me and helped me with troubleshooting this, we've now got the solution. It turns out the Johnny Guitar plugin for the New Vegas script extender needed a hotfix in order to fix a lookup into a... Okay, I'll just add a link into the description below. So you've got the same mod list as me. Okay, it's all going to be fine. So this time, if we craft the rocket launcher, everybody cross your fingers and... It's not exploded out of shame. Brilliant. Though, I'll admit, the damage is a bit on the low side, but we can fix that. Oh, here we go. For just 200 caps, that is a lot of condition and uh, a huge amount of damage. 30 damage a shot. I flippin' love it. And on top of that, I can just afford to improve the sniper rifle. And to be honest, um, let's just say the route I've got planned in the wasteland, we might just be needing it, yes. And then we just load her up with everything that happens to be extremely light, or indeed, yes, in the case of money, completely bloody free when it comes to weight. Because, of course, in the old days of Fallout 3, the rocket launcher was the only weapon you had where ammo had weight. But now we're playing by Vegas hardcore rules. That's not true anymore. So, actually, the rocket launcher, given I can load it with ammo that has zero weight, i.e. the pre-war money, that's actually, yes, more weight efficient to keep going than any other gun in the game. Which is weird, but here we flipping go. Speaking of which, oh, I should really dump some of this. Like in my locker, because there is no reason to be carrying around over 10 weight and energy cells. There we go, 131 weight, much better. So yes, now we've got a lot more carry weight to take out into the wasteland, especially as yes, I now have to be carrying food and water with me too. Though, uh, one more thing before setting out, which is, yes, I accidentally provided the perfect demonstration of a very little known system in Fallout 3 last week, and then I didn't notice it and didn't comment on it till I was editing it. So, okay, just pretend it's last week and we've only just met Lucas Sims and he's only just told me to go and deal with the bomb, meaning I can get a speech check. The speech check being at 36%, it would be 40%, but I've got my gun out, so that knackers it a bit. But if I just very quickly go down to the bomb and then fix it up because I'm already an explosives expert, so just pretend all the stuff with Mr. Burke, the love of my life, never actually happened. I'll be damned. You did it, didn't you? I did as well, and straight away as a result of that, the speech check has now gone up to 65%. My charisma is the same. My speech is the same. The only thing that's changed is his disposition. Because yes, just like Oblivion, characters in this game do have disposition, it's just you can't see it because there's no persuasion minigame. But it's there, and it very rarely comes up unless there is a character who, one, has a speech check, and two, has the ability for you to impact their disposition in some way. Anyway, back to the future. It's not the future past, John, it's the present, okay? It's just you're the past, deal with it. Right, as I say, we're going out into the world today. And having taken some time last week talking about why I love Megaton, today, as I say, we're going to be flipping that on its head, and instead, we're going to be spending a lot of time looking and discussing the Fallout 3 Wastelands. Now, admittedly, we did touch on this last week a little bit, and yes, we were discussing how much I love random encounters that add a lot of 
chaos because you don't know what's going to be showing up where. In particular how some random encounters can run into other random encounters or enemies that are just floating around in general, creating all sorts of chaos that you may never have seen before. It just feels very appropriate. I just think it's a really, really damn nice system. But there's another really important point to the Wasteland that I want to discuss today. And I think this is going to be particularly interesting because since the last time I discussed this, when I was putting together Fallout 3 is better than you think, I've come across some new information about the design decisions that went into Fallout 3's Wastelands. Because one of the things I absolutely love is right in front of you right now. And that is nothing. The fact that the Fallout 3 Wasteland has empty space in it to create the sense of a desolate, lonely wasteland. And I've always loved that sensation, but until recently, when I was planning for this very series, I never came across any information, like, you know, from Inside Bethesda, that this was actually an intentional design decision. But yes, while I was planning this very episode, I came across a really interesting presentation given by Joel Burgess, the lead level designer for Fallout 3, who had specific responsibility for putting together the Fallout 3 wasteland, in terms of its shape and size and all the rest of it, and also something's trying to eat me. Just a couple of mole rats, nothing to worry about, I'm sure it's all going to be fine. Right, head pops off, it should be one more somewhere. Come on, buddy. Come on, where are you? No, no, no. Love that iron side taming, and... Uh, Oh, we are getting crits so fast. Magnificent. So as I was saying, I recently found this presentation that Joel Burgess, lead level designer, gave back in 2011, talking about Fallout 3's level design. And uh, it contained a really fascinating bit of information about Fallout 3 that I'd never come across before, which is uh, as early as the beginning of 2008. And bear in mind, Fallout 3 came out in late 2008. The Wasteland was significantly smaller, just in terms of square footage. That doesn't mean there were less locations in it or anything, but the actual physical play area of the Capital Wasteland was significantly smaller. And he even kindly provided a lovely slide showing us precisely how much smaller. And everything in Fallout 3 was just closer together. The Wasteland was way more dense. Locations were nearer to each other. Characters were nearer to each other. And they concluded it just didn't have the right feel for a post-apocalyptic wasteland. So as a result of that, they just expanded the map and spread everything out. Creating the wonderful wasteland where there's just space for you to be alone. Because okay, fine, I've run into a couple of mole rats. But beyond that, this journey today has just been quiet and eerie and lonely. And a post-apocalyptic wasteland should be, damn it. And honestly, I think that change might have been one of the most important made in the entire development of Fallout 3. I just can't imagine what Fallout 3 would be like if everything was just like 25% close together and you just didn't get the incredible atmosphere you get in Fallout 3. That sense of being alone in the wasteland its just so critical to this game. You just blend it with a couple of other decisions that were made, like say the compass, not actually having icons on it, just having tiny triangles. So you don't really know what's in a given direction. It might be nothing. It might be a vault, just helping with the sense of lonely exploration where you don't really know where you are or what's around the next corner. And on top of that, how many unmarked locations there are on the map because many locations simply don't exist as map markers. What I'm walking towards right now in the game files, it's called the Cratered Hamlet, but it doesn't actually exist as a map location. It's never named it internally. But the nice thing about these unmarked locations is, well, one, there's about as many of them as there are named locations. So there's all sorts of stuff on the map, which even if you're navigating using the compass, you would never actually locate. And I see there's a safe over there, by the way, though. A fair few rads and uh, nope, can't do anything with that. So just uh, leave that be. Leave the crater of the cratered Hamlet alone. But yeah, many of these are unmarked locations, just things of interest that you might see, but don't actually have a name. They very often got something going on inside them. So uh, in this particular instance, after a handful more mole rats explode, lovely. I know for a fact that this location's got itself a skill book in it. In fact, I believe it is. Uh, hang about. I'm looking for a bathtub. Is it you by any chance? It was you. So, uh, yeah. 
very often in this game, you are rewarded for being an explorer. Just go and find stuff that's out in the wasteland, even if it doesn't have a, a name or a compass take or a mission or anything of that nature. Just do it anyway, and there would often be skill books as a reward for doing that. And hello, sexy. 0.45 auto pistol. Okay, we've got the flipping Vegas DLC gun showing up all of a sudden. Still, enough of me just babbling about the wasteland, which I love. Let's get to actually, you know, exploring it instead. And uh, I know what you're thinking, John. Where are you going? You're supposed to be going, or at least you said you were going. When it's you, John, that doesn't really mean anything. But you said you were going to Minefield, which is not the way you're going. And that's true, because, well, as a starting point, I don't want to go to Minefield directly. Instead, I want to make a little trip to uh, somewhere else first. If we can, I wouldn't mind going to say hello to Paradise Falls, because, uh, well, we've got a friend waiting for us at Minefield, Arkansas, and uh, I think it's very easy to miss this, but um, there's a lot more to his story than you might expect, because uh, I imagine plenty of people, just because Minefield shows up so early in Wasteland Survival Guide, go to Minefield, a man named Arkansas shoots at them, so they shoot him straight back. But there's more to his story than that, and if I can make it to Paradise Falls, uh, I can show that. If I can't, then I'll just tell you. But let's see if we can make it to Paradise Falls. Though, um, yes, there might be issues between me and there, such as... Actually, ammo is worryingly low. I really should have... Also, I'm being... Oh, it's just a mole rat. That was needlessly overdramatic music game. Holy flip, that's the crashed alien ship event, which... Okay, this one is bloody weird, because it's supposed to be a random event that can happen on any Taipei location, but I swear I have seen it right here at this train yard more than once. Hang about, hang about, hang about. This wasn't actually part of the original plan, but, um, okay. We did definitely just get the alien event around uh, Moresti train yard. Hang about for a second here. This might be, this might be rather interesting, actually. Alien power cell. Oh, bloody hell, I didn't prep this. Did not prep this at all. Where is the alien weaponry? Because I can see ammo, though admittedly not much ammo. Okay, hang about, hang about, hang about, hang about. Yes, an alien ship comes down in Fallout 3. It's much less obvious than in Fallout 4, where you really can't bloody miss it. But downside of this event being, yes, the ship explodes and it sort of just scatters weapons and ammo around the area. And that being sometimes the weapon just sort of... Just sort of ends up on top of something. And then, then you just don't get it. And then, that's sad. That's a real shame. I hang on, where's the cocking thing? Bloody hell, I bet it's on screen right now, but I don't see it. Because me and my perception, it's not a bit. I'm just terrible at seeing things for some reason. Okay, so there may be a powerful alien weapon somewhere in this bit of the world. And I simply can't locate it. But, oh blimey. Well, this is just meant to be, because I think I might know who can. I might just have, just around the corner, a lovely new best friend who's very good at finding things. Please don't despawn, I will be coming back for you in a second. We're making our way, of course, to our very first companion. Though, I'm going to be honest with you. When I played this game for the first time, I did not find dog meat. I simply didn't come across the scrapyard. And then uh, when I played this game uh, a second time, same deal. It took me multiple playthroughs uh, before I actually stumbled across him. Uh, just because uh, he's in a bit of a weird place to my mind. Like we're going towards him, he's right about there. But yes, if you were walking, say, from, uh, yeah, Megaton up to Minefield, I think you could, uh, I guess you come close by, but I feel like he's not quite exactly, uh, yes, en route. I suspect someone else in Bethesda had the same view as well, because in Fallout 4, yeah, dog meat just outside your starting location, pretty much just off the main road, in clear sight, there's no way you can't find dog meat in Fallout 4, so it definitely wasn't just me. Still, just be a bit careful, because we are nearby to, uh, yes, a random spawn location, when we're this nearby to uh, Scrapyard, so... I don't see anything yet. I think it's a B-type, so something might be patrolling to the south of Scrapyard just to get in over here. And in a moment, we should hear 
some barking, some raiders fighting, etc, etc, etc. Oh, there we go, I hear gunfire. So somebody is, for some reason, trying to shoot a dog, possibly because they want to eat him. And there we go. The dog, in fact, is doing very well, but I am going to help him out. Too late. It turns out that, uh, yes, indeed, he's already managed to take care of himself because, uh, oh, blimey, we need to, uh, we need to talk about dog meat. All right, because dog meat is terrifying. He is a god pretending to be a dog for some reason. Oh, but just look at him and that little waggy tail. Okay, dog meat, me and you can be friends. In case you've ever wondered, by the way, uh, dog meat, his breed is almost certainly an Australian cattle dog. And there is a very particular reason for that. It's because uh, dog meat was, uh, well, actually, you know what? Up to this point, dog meat was always an Australian cattle dog. Because, yeah, in Fallout 1, he's an Australian cattle dog. It's kind of hard to tell because he's very small and very far away. But, in all fairness, the dog in Fallout 1 is supposed to be the dog from Mad Max. And that was an Australian cattle dog. So, dog meat just always was this particular breed. With the possible exception of Fallout 2, canine, it's kind of hard to tell what breed he's supposed to be. Kind of unclear. But yeah, it was New Vegas that made the shift over to German Shepherd for Rex. Fallout 4 kept going, so this was the final appearance of an Australian cattle dog as dog meat. And dog meat has given me the man's best friend perk, okay? We picked up New Vegas style active perks when you've got someone traveling with you. That's interesting. So while dog meat's in my party, I deal 25% bonus damage to knock down targets. In addition, you can ask Dogmeat to mark his territory, setting a fast travel marker. Okay, now that's cute, actually. I like that. Still, let's just take a moment to... Okay, you know what? First, let's take a moment to talk to Dogmeat so that we can, yes, indeed, tell him he's a good boy or bad. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell him he's good. This doesn't do anything, by the way. It's just for flavor. So let's talk about the unholy abomination that is dog meat, the eternal, the universe ender. Because basically, in classic Fallout, companions could die. All right, they ran out of health, they died. That was just a thing. In fact, canonically, well, okay, canonically in inverted commas, according to the Fallout Bible, a series of notes written by Black Owl Studios aren't actually in the games, but were written by the original creators, so your mileage may vary as to whether that's canon or not. They specified the original dog meat was supposed to have died in the Mariposa base during the events of Fallout 1. Canonically, that's supposed to be what happened. And Bethesda decided, okay, companions can die. We'll have our companions dying. And a lot of people were very, very upset that dog meat could die. Because dog meat, you know, took some bullets and died because he was a dog. So when Broken Steel came out, they um, took the opportunity to make some small changes to dog meat. Such as the fact that he started scaling with your level. For every level above five that you went up one, he went up one too. Meaning by the time you were a maxed out character at level 30... This dog ended up with 15,000 hit points. But just in case that wasn't enough, Broken Steel also added the puppies perk. So if dog meat somehow bloody died anyway, despite having more hit points than a super mutant behemoth, then you could just go get another dog meat from Vault 101. A new one would just spawn for you. And just in case that wasn't enough, the new dog meat is actually tougher than the original. The base health gets doubled from 500 to 1,000. So it's possible Bethesda may have slightly overcorrected on the uh, topic of dog meat mortality. Just for reference, by the way, if you take Butch as a companion, his hit points cap out at 335. Next to 15 cocking thousands. Funny old thing about the scrapyard, by the way, before we move on, which is if you go up to the, yes, this is the northwest corner of it. Very easy thing to miss this, which is uh, there is a bus right on the corner next to uh, this old building. And if you go into this bus, there is an ammo box. But this ammo box is not an ammo box, but rather John's treasure box. Locked hard, though there is also a random event that can give you the key to this if you get really, really lucky. This box contains uh, three skill books, which may be the single biggest number in a single location in the entire game, which is uh, kind of wild right here. And those aren't even the only skill books present. 
the scrapyard where you pick up dog meat is also, yes, the, um, the base of one of the most evil characters in the game. If you take the contract killer perk, then, yeah, the office to this scrapyard becomes the base of the bounty hunters, who you hand over ears to in return for money. But you should never do this because, one, there's not that many good characters who you can harvest ears off, and two, they pay 15 caps. 15 caps per murder. You can make more than that just killing a random raider and taking their goods back to Moira. But yes, indeed, it's this small shack right here. Can't be open because it needs a key. You get the key by taking Contract Killer. Though, yeah, the one reason you might want to go in there is there is a skill book. It's a speech one. But as I say, there's no shortage of skill points in this game. Hardly worth the trouble of taking what's otherwise a very flimsy perk. Now, uh, dog meat. Dog meat, dog meat, dog meat. Me and you are going back to Moresti Train Yard. This is not the order I plan to do anything. But Dogmeat has a very, very useful command. I can ask Dogmeat to go and find things for me. And sometimes if something's got stuck under the scenery, say, Dogmeat can just get it anyway. So, oh Dogmeat, if you could find me the Fire Lance, the special alien blaster that I just happened to spawn... Oh, I'm going to give you so many dog biscuits. You do not even know. I don't dare fast travel in case that despawns anything, by the way. So we're just going to... Oh, hang on. We've got ourselves a trader. Is that Lucky Harif? It is as well. Magnificent, buddy. Oh, he's even got the recharger rifle. la -de da though. Cheaper and weaker than I remembered. And a varmint rifle, too. Okay, we've got all the fancy new Vegas stuff here. Oh, and our first sign, actually, of uh, weapon modding. So, okay, weapon mods are in Fallout 3, and uh, yeah, because the economy in Fallout 3 is much less developed, there's not as much money floating around uh, as in New Vegas. Yeah, the mod prices uh, are a lot lower than they would be otherwise. And uh, he does also sell uh, the shish kebab, which is such a good weapon, actually. You know what, buddy? I'm going to take that varmint rifle. Okay. Night scope. I mean, it's not the best weapon in the game, but it's better than nothing, to be honest. I'll be taking that, and then I'll take a handful of ammo. Just, okay, when I say a handful, literally a handful. We're basically out of money at this point. I should point out, by the way, we do need to be a bit careful with um, dog meat for the moment, because right now I'm not level five yet. So uh, he's going to get basically exponentially stronger versus the enemies he's going to be running into as we level up. But he can still die, so we should definitely be a bit careful with him for the time being. Once he's found me the Firelands, he's going to go and hang out in my house, and he's had a chance to level up with me a bit and become an unstoppable super tank. Okay, dog meat. This is going to take a little bit of explaining, but try and stay with me. Approximately maybe 12 hours ago, an alien spacecraft exploded up there. And it has scattered some alien technology. I need you to locate the technology. It is going to be somewhere around here. So please find a weapon. Go hunting for a weapon, boy. You can do it. I believe in you. Can't help but notice. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang the cock on. He's doing it. He's found something. Dog meat. What have you... What have you found, dog meat? Where are you going? He's, he's going down towards... Oh, hang on. Could that be? Holy flip, I think he just found it. It fell outside this area. Dog meat, did you just actually find the... Dog meat, you are the best boy. I love how he wags when you tell him that too. It's marvelous. So, say hello to the Fire Lance, which is damage 63, DPS 430. So, basically, it's just a tiny pocket super weapon, but with the downside that, um, yes, I've got 10 and only 10 shots for it, though... That does actually make me think. Dog meat, just out of interest. Hang about, hang about, hang about. Dog meat, I've got more work for you. Okay. Any chance you could find some more ammo? Because the ammo might be around here too. So, okay, he's having a think. He's having a think. He may possibly have just located additional. There was also. Oh my goodness, he's actually finding more alien power cells. This is not what I was planning for today, but you know what? I'll flipping take it. This dog has just provided me with alien super weaponry. Please find more, by the way. 
No dog meat, not the railway spikes. They're not that useful at all, dear oh flippy dear. And nope, he's just trying to give me railway spikes at this point. Okay, I think that might be your lot. So, uh, all right, I have now got a super weapon, mag flippinificent. And yes, as we might be about to go into much more dangerous territory, trying to make our way to Paradise Falls, which I am still going to do, despite this small dog and alien distraction. Dog meat, it's probably best that you, um, yes, wander off for the time being and nip back to... Uh, you could just go and wait at my house in Megaton, because I've got a house. Okay, apparently Vault 101's the only option. Okay, bright, shiny new day. We have got ourselves, yeah. That is just a little raider base over there guarding the logical river crossing nearby to Big Town. Keep a distance from them. Okay, this is where things get interesting, which is... Super Mutants. In Fallout 3, Super Mutants are generally not particularly difficult to deal with. They are slow, they're flimsy. In New Vegas, even a basic Super Mutant will kick your ass and wear it like a hat. For the simple reason that they are ludicrously dumb levels of fast. You know what, just take a shot. That was officially a sneak attack crit. Okay, we're not- uh oh, uh oh. What did he just pull out? What did you just pull out? Because it looked big. And uh, where are you, buddy? And go! He has a laser rifle on him. That's... That's not nothing. That is not nothing at all. Also, his centaur has just given up and uh, not bothered doing anything. Okay, we might not want to go into that church over there, by the way. Because there's more super mutants in that church. Also, am I about to regret saying, oh, I don't need to bring energy cells with me. I'll just leave them at home. No, I'm not, John, because laser rifles use microfusion cells. You know this. Damage 11, but bonus crit chance. Not bad, but not spectacular either. Maybe stay with a sniper rifle for now. And yeah, okay. Skirt around the church. Once again, there's more skill books in there. But then again, there's skill books everywhere. You can't bloody sit down the sofa without finding a couple of skill books behind the cushions. That is... Uh, yeah, that's Germantown police headquarters up there. That's even more mutants. We're definitely into uh, mutant territory. So uh, ignore the church. Ignore Germantown headquarters. Uh, Heading towards uh, the giant... Uh-oh. I really hope that's just the vicious dog that's coming at me right now. And I think it is. Fire money at them. Go away, stupid dogs. Okay, this is fine. This is all absolutely fine. We're just going to take them out with money. Yeah, we're just firing money at them. This is like bribery. Extremely aggressive bribery. And there we go. Screw you. Okay, we need to reload the gun with more... Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, this thing's great. I don't have anything to load in it right now. And I'm in danger. Okay, do I want to? I want to start running, actually. Okay, now we're just running. That was a lot of dogs. And we're running very, very low on ammo. But it, it's all fine. Once we get nearby to Paradise Falls, that will solve all my problems. Or I'll run into... That's a Fallout 3 Rad Scorpion, and I'm a very low level. Okay, everything's going to work out. Though, oh, I'm approaching Paradise Falls from the south. On this particular... Well, that's just a bad luck. I'm not sure whether you are a patrol. I was about to say there is a B-type roaming encounter on the road nearby to Paradise Falls. It may possibly be you. I'm not sure. And also... Oh, right, yes. Rifles. That rifle might be a lot stronger than I'm expecting it to, to be, actually. Um... Pop some stim packs, perhaps, and and hope, because they're not instantaneous. Gun away. That faster in Fallout 3. I can't remember. I'm now forgetting everything because I'm panicking. Just just run. Make a run for it. We're going to make it to Paradise Falls. We are going to just keep eating more and more. Oh, Nuka Cola. Do that. Mile of cakes. Brilliant. Just down some Coca Cola. Mole Rat is now. God only knows what's happening. If we're lucky, I think the mole rat is... Okay, the mole rat just saved my life. That mole rat is now attacking that super mutant. Everything is fine. Welcome to the Fallout 3 Wasteland, where often the best solution you've got is actually turning one enemy against another. Because that mutant is no longer hunting me. Meaning, as a result of that, I'm, in fact, safe. I actually pulled it off, too. So, okay. 
Paradise Falls, a home of the slavers. And yes, I've come here because I want to have a chat with them about a lovely... It's fine, that's just a trading Brahmin. No one's going to kill me. It's all A-OK. -okay. I love the traders in this game, by the way. How they actually do trade. They circulate. If you've never actually noticed this before, you've probably seen it, but never really thought about the uh, logistics of it. But basically, yes, there are a certain number of traders that can actually go up over the course of the game, and they will actually circulate from settlement to settlement. So they go to, you know, Canterbury Common, Megaton, all the rest of it. They just basically travel around. So sometimes you just run into a doctor with a heavily armored bodyguard out in the waist. So just sometimes you'll be saved by a passing caravan. It's beautiful. Anyway, my new best of slaver friends, let's have a chat about Paradise Falls here. Hold it right there. Nobody's allowed into Paradise Falls except on slaver business. And I get to decide what qualifies as slaver business. So, few different ways we can get in here, because would you believe it, you're not just allowed to walk in and have a poke around the slave pens. So, a speech check will potentially get me the option to bribe him, but I can't bloody afford it right now. Just kind of spent uh, all my money on various other bits and pieces. If your karma is evil or below, so that is, what's that, minus 250 or lower, I believe, then yeah, you can use that to just get straight in. There is actually a hidden option that's not on this screen, which is, yes, if you actually help them with the runaway slaves as part of the Temple of the Union quest, then they'll just let you straight in because you literally help them elsewhere. Alternatively, you've just got to do a deal with him. Eulogy's got a special contract out for a few VIPs. I'm too busy or I'd get them myself. You get them for me and I let you in. Deal? And yes indeed, no problem whatsoever. One more thing. I got this Mesmatron thing. It's some kind of stun gun. I want you to test it out for me. A little research project. You take this measure, shoot it at some poor schmuck. While he's in La La Land, you slip one of these collars over his head. Be careful with that collar. It'll explode if you tinker with it. Tell the slave to boot it over here pronto or his head will pop. And there we go. Strictly Business begins together with a brand new stun gun. And yep, there we go. Top option, Arkansas from Minefield. In fact, actually, there may well be some of you who didn't even know he was an option. Because if these people aren't dead, they simply don't show up as options. But yes, indeed, buddy. Before we go over there and get shot by Arkansas, tell me about him. Arkansas is that asshole holed up in that minefield. Killed a whole Paradise Falls crew. Eulogy wants him to suffer. Head east. Watch out for Germantown. Damn mutants took over the police station there. So we get a bit of a hint as to what's going on. Though there is a bit more to the story than that. It's not actually included in the game. But okay, we're touching on stuff that you may or may not choose to consider canon. But shortly after Fallout 3 came out, an official strategy guide was published. But it didn't just contain maps and solutions and whatnot, it also fleshed out a whole bunch of extra lore details, one of which was pertaining to Minefield. According to the official game guide, slavers came in and captured everybody, with one exception, Arkansas himself. The reason the town's covered in mines and has got Arkansas as a sniper guarding it is because he wants to get revenge on the slavers and has at some unspecified point in the past managed to lure some of them in and taken them out using mines and sniper fire. So, Alright, how about we now head over to Minefield, because uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in there, actually. Including a really weird easter egg secret that had been bugging me for over a decade, but I think I might finally have figured out the solution to. So let's just uh, carefully head into town. And yes, indeed, just bringing Moira a mine will do for basic completion, but we don't want to do that. We want to do the full business. All right, every single optional objective. That means going right into the center of town. Nice thing is, though, because this place is full of landmines, once we're in town, we're not really going to run into any other trouble. The game doesn't have any random events spawning in the immediate vicinity, because if they walked into town, they just explode. And speaking of just exploding, 
Can we see the lad right now? No, that's just uh, that's just a post of concrete. But, 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 fun thing about Arkansas, he is somewhere up there on that platform. And there we go. Now it's actually loads to him. We might be able to see him at some point. But yes, he's going to take pot shots at me. But the pot shots are scripted. He doesn't actually need to detect me. Or anything. In fact, what there is is like a proximity sensor around the various cars in town. When I get near enough, he starts firing. I'm gonna try. There he is. Now we've got him. Not that I want to get him because I don't want him to die. So yeah, this could be nasty, of course, because uh, chain reactions. That's the problem. Plus, mines hidden in the grass can be hard to see. So in just a moment, even though I'm a hidden, he's gonna start firing. As soon as I get near enough to the car. So just give it a second. And there we go. He opens fire on the car. The car's going to explode. When the car explodes, it takes the nearby mines with it. Even though I'm still hidden, he's neutral. He doesn't know I'm there. The bullets being fired are purely a scripted event. So check the mailboxes, by the way. Because yes, don't forget, temporary magazines. They exist now. And just keep on keeping on Nice and careful. There we go. Incredibly useful for bypassing skill checks. The old uh, little magazines. And Oh, he's firing again. Yeah, I think what happens is every time you enter or leave the proximity area, he fires on the car again, even though the car is like, you know, already on fire. I think he might have gone for lunch because the bullets just keep coming, even if he's not there, which is hilarious. So, okay, just... Get more mines, check more mailboxes, and the doors. Yeah, the doors, some of them are pretty hard locked, and uh, we'll be discussing... I miss this mine. Lucky that didn't go wrong, to be honest. Yes, the doors are very interesting. The houses are very interesting. We'll be uh, getting into why later. Because, yes, there's uh, some really weird stuff in this town, but I think I have finally... That's... Okay, that car's about to explode. Okay, he definitely did fire that. He did fire that. That's true. I could return fire if I wanted to. There's Arkansas right there. But no. No, no, no. We don't want to do that. First things first. How about we, uh, yes, make sure we've done what Moira wanted me to do. And once again, he's just shooting at the uh, cars. There we go. He explodes that car over there. I got near enough he wants to do that. So, uh, yes, he's not a very good sniper in many ways. Just... Not really doing anything to uh, stop me from advancing into town. But just a couple of steps further. I think you need to like touch the uh, lovely... Oh, it's possible. There we go. I got to the playground. And he still doesn't know I'm here. Bless him. Now, okay. Fun thing about this... He's still just firing on various cars, by the way. He has no idea I'm here. Despite the level of fire and explosions... Yeah, it's kind of funny once you realise that. That uh, he doesn't actually know where I am. He has uh, no way of figuring it out. And basically, will probably never really spot you at all. Like, somehow he can't see me in the middle of the road. It's downright weird, actually. But yes, he's just firing at the cars. He's not firing at you. So you can just basically wander around town as long as you're sneaking. And he just doesn't really care. So, as I say, the houses. They have uh, some rather interesting things going on with them. Specifically, there are four houses in this town you're allowed to go into. Though, yes, some of them are locked up pretty tight. Suggesting I wouldn't be able to get in. But no, that's not actually true. If we take down Arkansas or pickpocket him or whatever, he's got a key on him that opens every single house in town. Which is useful because, yeah, I believe it's two average locks, one a hard and one easy. You know what? I think it's time we need to uh, deal with him. Ideally, get the key off him and then enslave him. Easiest way to do that would be, yeah, we just want to get around the back of him if we can. Because, yeah, it's much easier just to sneak up the back of his little ruin that he's based in. And, oh, that was just enough to level up as well. Brilliant. Okay, you know what I want? Medicine. I would love some medicine. Standard guns going in the right direction too. And we are not on a perk level. Okay, I think he's... Oh, bloody hell. He's definitely realised I'm... Uh, definitely realised I'm here. Just drop down into his compound. So, okay. We're now inside his compound. What I want to do... And I don't even know if this is possible, by the way. This is not the order I was planning to do anything today. Is uh, 
go over to the... Oh, it's got a new Wibbly Amy thing. Okay, that's its new reticle. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Well done. That's lovely. All right, and here we go. In fact, he's coming to me. Perfect timing. He is coming to me and you, buddy. I need you to be enslaved. Nice and easy, please. So one headshot. Did that work or did it go through him? Sometimes guns go through people. No, we're fine. Right, before he wakes up... I'll just be having that key off of you, buddy. Brilliant. Oh, that was the... That was the karma noise. The game's judging me for stealing this key off this lad. All right, hold your negative noises, game. We're only just getting started. Couldn't get the sniper rifle, though. Right, buddy. Am I drunk? I think I'm drunk. Uh, do I seem drunk to you? I didn't need to do that. I could just ask him to hand me his stuff. I'll just be taking, yes, the sniper rifle, the ammo, and... You know what? You're closed. You get to go to Paradise Falls naked, buddy. Ah, yes, Fallout 3. The game where you take people's clothes off and they very often end up, yes, more covered up than before you took the clothing off. Dear oh, flipping dear. Right, buddy, I have got a lovely, lovely bit of jewellery for ya. And I'm really sorry about this, but you now need to go to Paradise Falls. Have fun. Oh, that sounds bad. I need my head. Where's Paradise Falls? Okay, it's over in that direction. Don't explode any mines, by the way, and try to avoid Germantown. It's full of... Never mind, I'm sure he'll figure it out. Okay, pretty sure the town is pretty safe now, as long as I stick to... Yeah, there's definitely more mines. As long as I stick to the roads, we should be a-okay. There might be more just hidden in the grass. That is often the most dangerous bit, but it's fine. So, as I say... In Minefield, four houses. The first one in town, which is the only one with a blood splatter and a handprint on it, has a really weird bloody mystery. Which is the tiny, tiny house. There is a model of the house you are currently standing in, inside this house. And the very first time I played Fallout 3, I rush lockpick to 100 in order to get this thing open. And uh, you know the funny old thing... I've just used console commands to open this so I can show this right now. If you remember to come back here with lockpick 100, there is nothing inside this house. Aside from some basic drugs and some basic food. That's, that's literally it. Inside a very hard locked, unique asset. This is the only one of these in the entire game. And this has always bugged me. What is going on? What does this mean? And I think I might finally understand. And the reason I might finally understand is, oh my goodness, it's our old friend again. Yeah, we're going to be talking about some behind the scenes stuff today. Joel Burgess. Because a few years back in 2019, he finally spilled the beans on what was going on here. And it's tied to the names of the houses. There are four houses in this town. Gibson, Benson, Zane and Gillian. And Joel Burgess finally revealed what this all means, which is these are references to one of Hideo Kojima's very first games, Snatcher, a cyberpunk narrative thing. Gillian is the name of the protagonist. Gibson and Benson are both also characters. Gibson, however, is not an alive character. He is a dead character in this game, carrying a note that reads, Search the house. And if you search Gibson's house in Snatcher, you discover a scale model of Gibson's house. That's what this thing is. It's an easter egg referencing a specific puzzle in Hideo Kojima's first game of 1988. As for why there's nothing particularly good in it, because the box in the game Snatcher is also empty. The implication being, I believe, that somebody's already stolen whatever was inside it. And uh, do you want to know what's even more interesting? Which is, uh, Joel Burgess really pulled out all the stops on this easter egg. Because the corpse of Gibson can actually be located in the game Fallout 3. I'm nowhere near him yet, but if I remember, I will show him off when we get to him. Which is, uh, the Capitol Post Building, a newspaper headquarters located inside the DC ruins themselves. In there, you can find a corpse that is labelled uh, as Gibson. And would you believe, on his body, there is a note that reads, uh, Search the house and a key to his house right here in Minefield. Joel Burgess really pulled out all the bloody stops on this easter egg. On top of that, 
please help me solve the last mystery. Joel, if you're watching, please, just one more thing. What is the deal with the Zane house? Because I have been over the complete synopsis of this game and there is no character called Zane in the Snatcher. Three of the four houses are named after characters in one game. One house isn't. What's going on? What is this last mystery? So we're 95% of the way there. But still, so many years on, Fallout 3 has got mysteries I have not figured out yet. And yes, before we head back to civilization in any capacity, what I love about the Fallout 3 wasteland I'm about to explode, miss another mine there, I'm sure it's all fine, is the stuff that you can't easily find. The stuff that the game rewards you for bothering to explore. So, yeah, going in the northeast direction from Minefield, it looks like there's nothing there. Alright, no compass tick, no anything. You have uh, no reason to believe uh, there is anything in front of you. Which makes it all the more fun when you run into something like this. Just a random little uh, nuka rocket thing danced about. And yes indeed, that there, that's the king of the roaches. So we're just going to take him out. Nice and fast if we can. Okay, we've definitely got some sneak attack crits on the Roach King. See, I wasn't joking. That is his name. Okay, my, my sniper rifle is not the most accurate thing. I'm pretty sure he's firing at me. I'm going to be honest, it's fine, actually. Because, yes, under these rules, damage threshold means miniguns are not very dangerous at all anymore. And as for the Rad Roaches, looks like the Mole Rats are about to go and deal with that for me. Which is just beautiful. I am not going home. You're not a mole rat. Don't lie to me. There we go. Rad roach. I bloody thought so. I am not going home until such time. How on earth was that a sneak attack? I don't know. Possibly you were running away from something else. I'm not going home until I have sat on the throne of the roach king. There might well be. Oh, there's, there's, there's bad things. There's many. Okay, just sit on the throne. I shouldn't have sat on the throne right this second. There we go. Am I the Roach King? Wait, can you even hurt me when I'm sitting on the throne? Am I protected by the... I'm not protected by the throne. I've made horrible, horrible, horrible mistakes. But the Mole Rat is... Oh, the Mole Rats have come in to save me. Thank you, Mole Rat friends. And now just load lunch boxes, books, fire everything. Fire everything at everyone. Screw you. And the ultimate winner is... I was on your side, you dick. Now I've got nothing. Okay, go over to literally anything. Finish him off with a gun that fires bullets if we want to be Captain Boring, I suppose. Does anyone know where all the pre-war books went, by the way? Because those are kind of valuable. Now, as I was saying, behold, I am the Roach King. Look upon my work, she mighty in despair. And ignore the red tick behind me. I'm pretty sure that's a rad roach that's just got stuck in the scenery. Okay, step the next to Bank to Paradise Falls. Thanks to you, we finally have that sniper Arkansas in a collar. You have no idea how many good men that prick put into the dirt. I'm tempted not to sell him, just so we can torment him. Use him for target practice or something. <laughs> Here's another collar. Keep those hoochies rolling in and you'll be rich in no time. And more importantly, that lets me get inside Paradise Falls. Now, there is one thing I most definitely want to grab as I'm passing by. Also, buddy, I wouldn't recommend it to be perfectly... Yeah, explosive collars. They do explode. But no, no, no. What I'm really after is just nipping inside a eulogies pad nice and quick. Because that's going to get me a bobbleheads. Companions now do an extra 10% damage, have an additional 10% damage resistance. Okay, we did not need to make dog meat stronger, okay? He's already terrifyingly close to world domination. Okay, rest of this will all come back to later. No need to rush. The more towns available, the better. Instead, let's get back to Megaton because, yes, indeed, the whole reason we set off on this journey was Moira. Though, yes, it turns out the real treasure was the alien weaponry we found along the way. My very own landmine! Oh, just what I've always wanted. Well, always since I sent you out on this anyway. Now, tell me all about it. What was it like going through there? What's it like disarming a landmine? You press A. That's, that's about it, actually. You just run up to it and press A. But don't worry about any of this. No, no, no. Bottom option, snide. That's what we're going towards. 
I may be a little impulsive, but not an idiot. I'll just take a look at this on my own, then. I know you may not want to see any more explosives for a while, but obviously you know your way around them. I have a couple rainy day toys of mine. And looking at this landmine, it gives me an idea. It's a terrible device that does terrible things, of course. But it's easy to make your own, too. And there we go, some frag grenades and the schematics for the bottle cap mine. Magnificent. And that gets me some stim packs for finishing the entire chapter, 100 XP, and of course, the next handful of challenges. Still, I would say that is more than enough for now, but next time, how about we think about making some actual bloody plot progress? Maybe say, you know, in the direction of a Galaxy News Radio, because uh, there's a couple of fun bits hidden away about 3Dog that might be a bit interesting to explore. So join me next week as we take our first steps inside the DC ruins. Uh, hopefully you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much, and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rad scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.